And now C.H. Maslin and Sons bring you Act One of Red Dust, starring Lex Barker. Well, we're off again. On our way home. First men to reach Alpha Centauri. The first men to reach a solar system outside our own and live to tell it. Except the two of us we left buried back there under that red dust. Look, Charlie, before you start crying about Kelly and Schwartz, remember we've got a long way to go before we reach Earth. So save your tears till then. You may need them for yourself. That's being very realistic. How about the doc so wrapped up over what we found down there that he wouldn't care if we ever got back? On the contrary, I'm very anxious to get back. Alpha Centauri had a remarkable civilization. Centuries in advance of ours, we'll benefit beyond measure from this accumulation of its knowledge we're bringing back. Makes us look like babes, huh? I'll never forget it. Those great, magnificent, shining cities. Yes, but no life. How weird. Completely deserted. Everything dead. Covered with that strange pink dust. They must have all died down there in some epidemic. And the dust just settled. Those papers you found there say anything about it, Doc? Oh, I haven't had a chance to look through them fully yet. Say, where'd all this dust come from? Well, we must have picked some of it up before we left. I thought we'd cleaned up the ship thoroughly. We were so careful. Let's see. It's that red dust from Alpha. It's all over the place. Boy, will I be glad to get back to Pittsburgh. Yes, it's the same dust that was covering planet A. Strange, how consistent. I feel crawly. I feel it under my clothes. My yeah. skin. What's a little dust? We'll be going home soon. You're right, though. It is kind of crawly. It gets under your clothes. No wonder I've been itching. There's something alive about this dust. I don't like the way it grows. Well, forget about it. What we should have brought along as a housemaid. <laughs> a pretty one. Good thing we'll be getting back to Earth again in a few days before this dust gets any thicker. The rate it's been spreading, in another week we'd have to fight our way through it. Time for the shots again, Doctor. Good heavens. Was that the radiation shot? Sure. Have we all been getting them? Well, except Kelly and Schwartz, before we landed Alpha Centauri, they, they claimed they were allergic. They got reactions. They, they didn't think they needed them. That cost them their lives. What? But we checked before we landed. There was no radiation on Alpha. The radiation is there. On my finger. The dust? Dust. But I thought that they caught something that, that we didn't, that we were immune to somehow. Oh, it, it couldn't be the dust. Well, the ship's full of it. Our skin, our clothes. Then, why did we survive? The radiation shots? Apparently. Huh? So far, it's no good. Frankly, now, when we signed up for this little thing, who would have thought that we'd make it there and back without a hitch? I don't think I even thought about it. Hey, Charlie. Can't you and the doc do something about this dust? I'm getting awful itchy. Time for the shots. Radiation shots again? Uh, that's more hogwash. 
What do we need them for? We're going home soon. What do we need them for, anyway? They just saved your life, that's all. They what? The doc just found out what killed Kelly and Schwartz. It was a radiation disease. Caused by that pink dust. No, oh, you're kidding. You mean this stuff? Hey, that's right. They didn't take their shots. It was a dust after all, and the reason we're alive is because of these shots. Ouch! <laughs> take it easy, Charlie. It's not my fault that Kelly and Schwartz didn't get their shots. Don't joke about it. Hey, Charlie. We're just as upset about this as you are, but there's nothing we can do about it now. Yeah, they knew when they came along what the chances were. Two men lost on an expedition like this? That's not so bad. Not when you consider that they didn't even survive, the first bunch didn't even survive the takeoff. What you've got to do, Charlie, is think about yourself. Concentrate on you. Yeah, you're just like the doctor. You don't care about anything but yourself. <laughs> no, you don't believe that. You wouldn't have worked for him so long. Oh, I respect him all right, but... I can't help thinking about Kelly out there on that, on that red desert. The dust swirling around him and, and us goggling down at him through the port. And Kirk yelling, here's a toast to Kelly. And he came clumping back into the ship, his flight suit covered with it. And all the time that, that deadly dust was spreading over him, just like it's spreading over this ship, getting inside him, eating him away. Charlie, look, we all know that death is the price of knowledge. Yes, but none of you care anything about it. All Kurt here is interested in is excitement. And the doc will do anything for science, no matter who suffers. And you, Duncan. I suppose I just came along for the ride. What is it, Doc? You look worried. Here it is. As much as they knew about it, as much as I do. The dust? I know it's refractive index. It's my axial interference figure. And that's about all. <laughs> Thanks, that makes it as clear as a foggy night. It's a weird sort of radioactive life. A virus that attacks any living matter that comes near it. Radiation, huh? <laughs> well, then we're safe. No, I'm afraid not. Our shots just slowed it down. Slowed it down? You mean then? Just temporarily. But they can't stop it. And we've got it too, like Kelly and Schwartz. Have we, Doc? Have we? Yes. And once it gets going, there's no stopping it. They found that out on Alpha Centauri. These little specks are alive and deadly. But Doc, if the shot slowed it down... The shots only take care of the radioactivity. But once that dust gets anywhere near you, its penetrating power is amazing. Tiny crystals settle in every cell of your body and begin to grow and radiate. Blocking off the radioactivity only seems to prevent quick death. It seems to have no effect at all on the growth of the crystals. And once they come anywhere near a vital organ... How long have we got? Uh, by attacking the radiation, slowing it down, perhaps... Ten, or at best, fifteen years. Ten years? Ten years to die in? But, but we can't let that happen. You've got to do something. There's nothing I can do, Charlie. Not even for myself. But to die like that, waiting for... Charlie, snap out of That it. dust searing the life out of us. Charlie, it's just another medical problem for the doc and the boys at Science Center to figure out. They've got ten years to do it in a breeze. They didn't come up with an answer in Alpha Centauri, did they? You're gonna die, Kurt. Big, brave, Kurt. You're just like all the rest of us. You try to prove all the time that you're better, but you're going to die. Kurt, stop it. Can't you see he's hysterical? Well, he had it coming to him. Charlie, you're just tired. Get some rest. Got a grip on yourself. Well, that's the way it's going to be. What this needs is a drink. Here, to the dust. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. <laughs> Red dust. You just can't resist showing off, can you, Kurt? Now, don't you start, Doc. Mm. Not starting anything, but I'm not afraid to admit that I'm just plain scared. Well, the way I figure it is, we're 10, maybe 15 years ahead of what we expected to be when we started on this little excursion. 
Boy, I can do a lot with 15 years. Girl on every planet, huh? Well, let's face it. I'm, I'm 35 now, and in 15 years, I'll be 50. Who wants to live any longer than that? 15 years, and then... Maybe you're right. If they have that much time, our scientists ought to be able to find some way to stop it. What is about the airlock. Poor fellow. What do you know? I didn't think he meant it. Guess he just couldn't live with the idea of death. You're both wrong. He said something before he... Do either of you realize what he meant? Well, he was off his beam. I knew that. He said what we were taking back to Earth was death. He was right. What? Listen. I know you're both tough enough to take this, so I won't sugarcoat the pill. We can't go back to Earth. We can't Say that go. again, Doc. I said we cannot return to Earth. <laughs> We'll bring you Act Two of Red Dust, starring Lex Barker. I'd like to use that minute to good advantage. I'd like to introduce a member of the Maslin Quality family. Here it is, Cantata, a Maslin Beauty Blend Broadloom. Cantata is a Wilton weave, and that means that the yarn is woven right through to the back. That ensures extra long wear. Gives you a hidden cushion of yarn under the pile. And the pile itself, well, that's anchored forever. A cantata features a sculptured design in two pile highlights for extra decorating value. And the texture, that's of heavy grow point, a really luxurious value at about $11.95 a square yard. See cantata at your Maslin dealer. It comes in several delightful colors chosen to complement your room and flatter your furnishings. The lovely sculptured design of cantata is highlighted in dark and light green, gray, beige, beaver, and cardinal red. Furthermore, Maslin brings you this richly designed, budget-priced carpet, Cantata, in widths up to 12 feet. Visit your Maslin dealer soon. Ask to see Cantata, a wonderful budget buy, made by Maslin, makers of fine carpets for more than four generations. And now Maslin brings you the second act of Red Dust, starring Lex Barker. Look, Doc, start at the beginning and go back. Why can't we return? That should be obvious, Kurt. Kelly, Schwartz, Charlie, Duncan, you, even the doctor. If we landed, do you think the red dust would stop with us? We'd contaminate everything we even came near. And then it would spread outward until there was nothing but one great sterile pink desert stretching from pole to pole. But when we get back home, they'll get rid of those red bugs in no time. The system of Alpha Centauri had scientists working with advanced techniques we can't even begin to understand, and they couldn't get rid of the dust. No. One boneyard in the galaxy is enough, Kurt. Well, what do you want us to do? Hang a bell out in front of the ship and go wandering around through space, jangling it, yelling unclean? Not quite. When we reach radio contact point, we'll be able to transmit all the valuable information and knowledge we've gathered. Once we've done that, our mission will be accomplished. Then the only thing left to do will be put the overcharge on emergency power, throw the converters out of phase, and then wait for them to explode. One quick, clean sunburst. Now, I'm sorry, Doc, but I don't agree with you. I don't believe in suicide for any reason. Yours or Charlie's, and that's what this amounts to. It's not the same thing. Well, it is to me. Look, Doc, you and me were both allowed alike. 
We know what we want, to do things. Not the same things, maybe, but once we make up our minds, we do it. I've made up my mind. This ship is not going back to Earth. Give me a minute, Doc. I don't think you've thought this thing through. You're a scientist. You know the answer to everything. What are you driving at? Well, as a scientist, you know it's only a matter of time before somebody comes up with the answer to this red bug thing. Someday, somebody's going to come up with an answer. Don't you want to be the one? Yes, but even on Alpha... Well, so they didn't solve it on Alpha. Maybe they were just on the verge. Maybe the, what, what they already knew, and just a little more research would have done the trick. Don't ed underestimate yourself, Doc, or the boys at Science Center. I would like to find the secret of that red dust. Well, you're a scientist, Doc. You face problems. You don't commit suicide in order to avoid them. Maybe you're right, Kurt. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right, Kurt. But I don't think so. Look, I just spent a lot of time talking old Davidson out of his screwy ideas, and I'm not going to waste any more on you. Don't you want to live? Sure. Sure I do. But so do several billion people down on Earth. So with Doc's radiation shots, are in the same boat we are. They've got 15 years to live just like the rest of us have. Maybe men like you, the ones who take the big chances, are important. And men like Dr. Davidson, too, but somewhere along the line, the, the others, the, the unimportant ones, have to be considered Otherwise, what you and the doctor accomplish means nothing. I worry about Kurt Fenster. Whether you realize it or not, you've got a bigger responsibility than that. The others may not mean much to you, Kurt, but you can't murder a whole system just to add a few more years to your life. Now you make me laugh, Doc. That system's not so hot. But it can be. It can't. There's hope. There's... If you take this ship in, there won't even be that. You kill me, Dunk. Here I thought you were so calm, cool. Why, just look at you when you get all worked up. Maybe the doctor will listen to me. I gotta talk some sense into one of you. Hold it, Dunk. Get over there and sit down. What do you think you're doing here? You can't scare a man who's already slated to die. Yes, but I can scare a man who doesn't want this ship to get back to Earth. Now sit down. What is this? We're just having a little discussion, Dunk and I. Put your gun away, Kurt. I heard your discussion. Now, yeah, what'll it be? Kurt, you said you thought we were very much alike in some ways. Well, you're right. You lose, Dunk, old boy. This ship goes back to Earth, red dust and all. Radio contact! There we are, Dunk. Over there. I know you're a scientist. You mustn't take the Meridian back to Earth. Give them a chance. Radio point seven, calling spaceship Meridian. Radio contact point L7, calling Meridian. Hello, contact point L7. This is Dr. Davidson, Meridian speaking. The Meridian, she's back. Wetzel, contact's been made with the Meridian. She's back, she's back, she's back. Give me that mic. Davidson. Hello, this is Wetzel speaking. Yes, Wetzel. 
Did you make Alpha Centauri? Yes, we made it all the way. Congratulations, wonderful. Anything on it? Cities, big cities, and machines. Wonderful. The inhabitants, were they friendly? There weren't any. Information is in my notes and documents. Can't wait to see them. When will you make contact? I have information to transmit. Now. Now? Hold it, hold till you... Now! Ready. Okay. Fire when ready. Ready. July 23rd. Landing on Alpha Centauri was made on a low plateau. Longitude 37 degrees 28 minutes, latitude 49 degrees 54 minutes, as reckoned on the Van Dusen astronomical projection. An analysis of the atmosphere reveals it reaches the point where death is inevitable. Furthermore, there is little possibility of developing a curative agent within the estimated 10 to 15 year margin between first contact and the complete destruction of all terrestrial life. Davidson, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. That is the sum of our information. I'm sorry that we will not be there to see the results of this expedition, but the scientist is also a member of the human race with responsibilities toward others, which he does not always realize until they are pointed out to him. Davidson, where are you? What's happening? Dr. Davidson, Dr. Davidson! Action is being taken to ensure that the Meridian and what remains of her crew do not return to the Earth. Meridian ending transmission. Approximate location, 7th lunar section, Estimated time of arrival, not given. Tonight's tale, Red Dust, starring Lex Barker. But before I tell you about next week's program, I'd like to remind you again about cantata. You know, most of us have an eye for quality, and most of us have a yen for luxury. Well, here, Masland has the answer to both. Cantata, a Wilton Broadloom designed in a sculptured pattern to bring a new air of beauty to your home. Just look at it. Notice the thickness. That's the result of the double pile, which is backed by a hidden cushion of yarn under the pile. The secret of Cantata and its super quality. Another fine Maslin Beauty Blend Broadloom made with a tasteful flair for beauty on an economy slant. Cantata is available to you now at only about $11.95 a square yard. Drop in at your dealers and let the magic of Maslin transform your home. Now be sure to be on hand next week when Tales of Tomorrow will present The Golden Ingot, starring Gene Lockhart, and presenting a brilliant new discovery never before seen on television, Miss Monica Lovett. Brought to you by Chrysler, the name that makes news in watch bands. Here is real fashion magic, the expansion watch band that transforms any woman's watch into a modern bracelet watch. It's Golden Fantasy by Chrysler. Think of it. A bracelet watch usually costs $50 or more, but Golden Fantasy gives you the same style for only $9.95, tax included. So go to your jeweler, ask him to show you Golden Fantasy. See for yourself how Chrysler makes news in watch bands. Adapted from a play by Theodore Cogswell.
CP means cerebral palsy, a name to remember. Give to your local affiliate of United Cerebral Palsy. Forget them not. For fun, adventure, and leisurely relaxation, there's nothing like a long pleasure trip to some faraway place you've been dreaming about. Of course, it takes money to travel. But you can be aboard that pleasure ship in your future if you get aboard the bond wagon today. By buying United States savings bonds regularly, you build up a fund that will look mighty good when you need it. And in the meantime, your money is growing. For every three dollars you put into these bonds, in 10 years, you get back four dollars. Make sure you won't miss the boat. Sign up for savings bonds now. The preceding program, originally telecast by ABC in New York, has come to you by special video recording. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.